Kristen DeMay here, coming to you today from my also not very Pinterest worthy home office. Today I wanted to talk about a news story that broke just a couple of days ago, and it's a story about Jerry Falwell Jr. You may have seen it. It turns out that Jerry Falwell Jr. had reached out to Michael Cohen, Donald Trump's fixer, a couple of years back. Um, Michael Cohen, you may recall, um, uh, was Trump's lawyer and he helped take care of um, certain problems, including Trump's Stormy Daniel problem, uh, Stormy Daniels problem in the run-up to the 2016 election. And it turns out Jerry Falwell Jr. had a similar kind of problem, or his was a problem of racy photos that he wanted suppressed. And so he turned to Cohen to take care of things for him. And Cohen did. Now what's interesting about this is the timing. This um, Cohen stepped in to, to help out Jerry Falwell Jr. just months before Falwell came out in public support of then candidate Trump. And this was at a critical moment, very early 2016. So January of 2016. At this time, a number of white evangelicals were actually supporting Trump, but very few evangelical leaders were. So we saw this kind of grassroots movement starting up, um, gaining momentum, um, uh, backing the unconventional candidate. Uh, but evangelical leaders, for the most part, were sticking with more conventional candidates, um, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz in particular. But in January of 2016, um, Jerry Falwell Jr. and uh, Robert Jeffress came out um, and publicly supported Trump. So in January, Jerry Falwell Jr. invited candidate Trump to Liberty University. And it was there that, um, well, news accounts report that he was given a hero's welcome, even though just months before, Ted Cruz had announced his candidacy at Liberty. Now, Falwell's loyal loyalties seemed to have flipped. And um, so Donald Trump appeared and gave a speech that was enthusiastically received by members of the audience. In that speech, he promised to protect Christianity. And he also, this is the speech where he gave his famous um, um, two Corinthians gaffe, um, which didn't really detract those in attendance and most conservative white evangelicals from really um, getting the main point, which was Trump was going to be on their side. He was going to support them. So again, this timing is important that Jerry Falwell Jr. comes to support Donald Trump as one of the first evangelical leaders to publicly um, do so. And now we know that he had ties to Trump's fixer, Michael Cohen, and Cohen had done him this favor. All of that is important and, um, and it's significant. It might be appropriate, before we move on, um, to take just a moment to think about what I just said. And that this has now become kind of normal um, conversation around American politics and religion, but just how bizarre this is, right? We're talking, first of all, about President Trump. <laughs> We're talking about his fixer, uh, Michael Cohen, and we're talking about an evangelical leader um, and his um, racy photos and um, more than a hint of scandal here, and all of this is, is in one package. And um, this has really become normal now. So having pondered that for a moment, um, moving on, I, I think it's also important to recognize that Jerry Falwell Jr.'s support for Trump is not reducible to the fact that Trump and through his fixer may have done him a favor. Because in fact, Trump's appearance at Liberty University in January of 2016 was not his first appearance at Liberty. He had given the commencement address back in 2012. And it's interesting to go back to that speech as well. Um, there too, uh, Trump was received to raucous applause, um, news accounts suggested, and um, he gave um, 
a kind of meandering speech in which he joked about prenups and um, talked about um, all, all sorts of different things and um, divorce and um, he also um, somewhat controversially uh, told students that they should um, get even if somebody wronged them in business and, and that was actually the most controversial part of the speech um, back when things like that um, were still controversial in conservative evangelicalism and the uh, kind of uproar that that provoked in certain circles caused um, Falwell Jr. to to really jump to Trump's defense. And this is how he did so. He said um, that that statement of getting even was not, in fact, incompatible with Christian teaching. It was, in fact, fully compatible with Christian teaching. It was, he said, representative of the tough side of Christian doctrine and the ministry of Christ. So, um, and I think that that longer history is important to keep in mind here when we, when we try to parse how so many conservative white evangelicals have come to support the president through thick and thin. So the um, Cohen Fixer kind of mini scandal is interesting and again significant, especially to understand um, the timing of a possibly to understand the timing of Falwell's endorsement. But um, it should not detract from this longer history and from these underlying affinities. So in my book on evangelical masculinity and militarism, Falwell is one of the, the characters and his father is another of the characters in this story. Um, what we see is over half a century, a kind of evolution of evangelical um, teaching and a growing embrace of this militant Christianity. And this militant Christianity, this kind of um, embrace of the, the toughness of Christian doctrine and the toughness even of, of, of Jesus Christ, um, we see that being very much caught up in uh, evangelical, evolving evangelical political commitments, and it is also um, very closely intertwined with evangelical views of gender, with evangelical views of femininity and female submission, and also with evangelical views of masculinity. And, um, and I think that that's an important backdrop, this narrative, um, in order to understand why so many evangelicals were drawn to a Donald Trump, who did not exemplify many traditional evangelical virtues, but he did promise to be their protector, their strong man, um, who would not let the softer virtues um, get in his way. He promised to um, defend them and and to claim power on their behalf.